Hello everyone, welcome to Unicorn Light Tarot. Sincerely hope everybody is doing amazingly well today. If you are brand new to this channel and you just clicked on welcome and if you are returning, obviously welcome to welcome one and all. Today we are doing the reading. Uh, we are reading your goddess essence. What goddess archetype do you possess? Now, this is sort of in second, uh, a second part to which goddess do you most resemble? So I'm going to link that uh, down below. If you have not checked out that reading, that could be really fun to check out after this reading. But instead of being specific about which goddess you uh, resemble, we will be talking about the archetypes today, your goddess essence. There's 13 of them that we have and we'll be going into not only what the essences, what the essences are, but how they relate to you and how you use them. And as always on Unicorn Light Tarot, we will be giving you some in-depth messages, um, how to integrate these energies. Uh, I mean, a little bit more than you already do. So as always, we have three piles. And for those of you who have been with me for a little while, you know that we always have a magical candle. We always have magic energy for healing and abundance with magic oil uh, within each of the piles. So you are welcome to use this, these readings as activations and healings any way you feel like you wish to, you, you wish you want to. Uh, it's totally up to you. Either uh, release what no longer serves you into the flame or bring in more abundance and beauty in with each reading. So as always, we have three piles. Now I placed an item, an object on each of these piles and I am going to resist the urge to um, to make them work for you. However they feel to you, whatever they mean to you is exactly the meaning that uh, we will be using today. So I'm not gonna comment on them at all, except to say for pile one, we do have the lock here and pile two, we do have the image of this beautiful little teddy bear with the gem here in the belly, in the sacral chakra here. And then we have the wedding ring or the eternal symbol here for pile three. Now, as always, take as much time as you need. The more aligned you are with your own soul and your more and your own energy, the more these readings will resonate for you. So if you need to go ahead and pause the video, feel free to do that. We will be here when you get back and we're going to take a large breath in. Hold for two, three seconds and release releasing what no longer serves you, you are welcome to pick that up at the end of each of these readings. That is entirely up to you. But for now, we just want you um, present and here with us so you can get the most out of these readings. All right, let's go ahead and move these out of the way for now. Beautiful. So if you chose pile one with the lock icon here, then these are your messages. Again, we are reading your goddess essence. What goddess archetype do you possess? So the first thing we're going to do is find out exactly what archetype you possess. So let's, and then we have two oracle cards here, which will give us more, some more information. And then we'll move through with other cards, including our goddess tarot today. So let's see, let me choose a couple of them. This one, the heroine, beautiful. So that's your first, ar um, your archetype, your goddess archetype, the heroine. Okay. I'm feeling another one for you, pal one. Let's do the visionary. Wonderful, wonderful. So let's start with these two and get you some more information about how these two work for you. So make mistakes, absolutely, and potion. Remember to practice self-love. Okay, so the first message that we're getting for you, Pal One, is that with the heroine and the visionary, you've come in with a lot of ancient magic, a lot of energy, a lot of beauty. And, you know, at times this world can be quite frustrating for you. Um, it's, it's kind of a difficult situation to be in, in some ways, because um, there's an advancement to your energy. 
whereby even though a lot of you may have had um, uh, situations like experiences growing up where you didn't feel as though you were getting anywhere and you know you were you were going over the same things and because you were in survival mode it may not have occurred to you the power that you had now uh, systematically people would have noticed that about you and some of them if they weren't intimidated might have let you in on the little secret and let you know that you know you were very powerful and if you had readings back then in your life you know, people would have, uh, you know, said that you're capable of this, that and the other. And, and you would have been like, you know, that's fine. It's not that you're throwing it out, but uh, the idea of actually getting there or actually um, being within that image of complete success and whatever it is that you wanted. It's, for some of you, it seemed... Um, it seemed possible, but also dreamlike at the same time. So your energy, um, it's really interesting. So the energy that I'm picking up, the messages that I'm picking up for you is because you were so well rounded in past lives and you came in with um, also a lot of karma too, which is something that with these experiences that you needed to move through. But because you came in with a lot of knowledge and a lot of knowledge that is needed these days, some of this knowledge has sort of um, been bypassed for the last couple hundred years and we've relied on different systems um, to move us through. And as we see, these systems are, are failing. They well, they've always they've always failed on a certain degree but now they're crumbling uh the the understandings that you have is exactly what we need right now and we're moving back into that so there's a resurgence of this energy coming in and so but you you really accumulated this in past lives before you had this knowledge so what you were here to do in as you were growing up, as you were moving into this energy, is that it's almost like, you know, you, you hear everybody talking about in the spiritual community, we come in and we forget. We have this amnesia, we don't know who we are, we don't know that we're, we are God, we're Godheads, that we are connected to source, and we have to find this out. This for you, absolutely, in many ways, you understood to be true. I mean, in, in, in some ways, you did understand that you were a godhead you you could see that in many ways but at the same time it's you didn't know how to connect to it there was there's this like this fuzziness around it even trying to articulate it was difficult it, it's like three steps backwards two steps you know uh two steps forward it didn't seem like you were really in alignment but there was a reason for this because your higher thought process needed to go through these experimentals, uh, these experiences that you needed to go through and you needed to work through all of that karma coming in. So a lot of um, the beginning of your life may have been in survival mode, but this was for a reason. You see, the thing is, there's no easy way to say it. So we're just going to do it. Real talk is that your power needed to be earned in this lifetime one way or another because because you had so much power from a past life, if you came in and started exercising that at such a small age, it would have been too much for you. So all of this uh, power was given to you in, in sort of small increments. So um, a lot of your spiritual journey has been really intense, but it's also been incremental for a lot of you. Now, these are general readings, so this may resonate with you slightly differently. So even though the heroine and the visionary, you would have seen that in yourself as an archetype, you maybe not would have known how to access it to its fullest degree or um, be able to access its power for you to move past, uh, you know, this this uh, movement that you were in, which very much was in um, survival mode. Now, it was important for you to be in survival mode because you've had affluent, you've had a lot of different past lives, but you've had affluent past lives before. Now, you will reach this success again without a shadow of a doubt. Um, but coming into an affluent way of life to begin with um, would not have been great for your spiritual journey. So um, for the heroine and the visionary, you needed to be able to have all these experiences that you went through. Now you've come in on the other side of that. You've gone through those experiences and you're ready. You're absolutely ready for this abundance to come in. And of course, this abundance is owed to you. This is something the heroine and the visionary, you absolutely knew that you would have. And for most of you, you've had a dream and you've known what this dream is. You know what it is that you want to achieve. And for some of it, you have to a certain degree and moving it one stage further. 
So it could have been difficult for you, Pile One, to want to make mistakes because there's a perfectionist element to you because you're very good at what you've done in past lives. It could have been very difficult for you to make mistakes. Now, that being said, with your personality type, if you do make a mistake and you hurt somebody else or uh, as a byproduct, somebody else is sort of caught in between it. You have no problem saying, I'm really sorry, I'm going to change my behavior. I'm going to look at that. That's not a problem for you. That's something that you're happy to do because you do think of everybody. In fact, you have a very macro version of the world. You're able to see things, you know, sort of objectively, which is um, a beauty and a curse at the same time because you feel everything, you see everything. Um, and there's a part of you that wants to shake humankind and say, kind of get it together. Why can't you just see this? You know, because you see it. But at the same time, that's been difficult for you too in this lifetime to take that macro vision and, and work it into this nuanced version of how you live your life. So um, in that way, you've been a brilliant friend to everybody else. Um, you'd be a great reader, um, great instructor, great life coach. But when it comes to your own life, it can be a little lacking, a little bit more difficult to see the wood for the trees. So there's been this dichotomy in your life, Pal One, about how you bring that macro energy to the micro and introduce it into your life and keep that stable in your life so you can really move forward the way in which you want to. So um, everything about you in some ways is very big, um, which is absolutely wonderful and beautiful, but bringing that down, that scaling down to be able to acclimate again into your own life so you'll be able to use these energies um, in your own life is what you're here to do. And you're here to learn this and you have been learning this. Again, all these experiences have been leading you to how to do this. This is part of what you are here to do. And it's not an easy thing to do. It's an incredible thing to do. And the fact that you've been doing this, the fact that you know all this knowledge from previous lifetimes is the only reason why you would be able to bring this wisdom in this way and learn how to sort of be on a one-to-one -one basis with people. So... Sorry, my cat is just busting out of the room. She cannot wait to be part of this reading. So making mistakes for you could have been quite difficult just because you do have that perfectionist attitude insofar as, why did I do that? I kind of knew. Because you do have this greater um, iconic kind of... Um, overseeing of everything. So even when you make these mistakes, even when you do this, there was a part of you that knew it was going to happen this way. There was a part of you that whatever was driving you, you know, it wasn't going to work out. This was, you instinctively knew, kind of went against maybe your um, intuition, which is absolutely spot on, by the way. So you've given yourself a little bit of a hard time, but we want to encourage you to, to keep making these mistakes because these mistakes are why you're here. We're not going to call them mistakes. We're actually going to put that aside. <laughs> We're going to call them experiences. It's really important for you to have experiences. In past lives, you were you were at the top of your game. You were at the top of who you were and what you were doing. Sorry, my cat's screaming in the background. So um, you weren't really in a position to make these mistakes or have these experiences because you were sort of, um, you know, the, um, you could have been um, some sort of magician. I mean, people came to you um, for your wisdom. So you were there to help people in a, in a very incredible way. So the accuracy for you was really, really important. So that's why if you're really hard on yourself and the, the, um, the pr uh, uh, perfectionistic kind of attitude, that's the reason why. But we want to encourage you to do that. And you've come here to make the mistakes. Again, it's experiences, to have these experiences, because that's going to give you the extra knowledge that you need, which will tie in with the, the beautiful knowledge of the heroine and the vision that you already were born into, you already acclimated to, you already knew, you had that in your essence, you carried that with you. To be able to bring this one-on-one -on -one and to be able to bring this slightly differently uh, to people in this lifetime. So um, with the perfectionist attitude, it can be difficult for you to put yourself first. Um, in fact, for some of you, it could have felt really unnatural. Now, this is something that you've had to learn how to do because it's part of the experiences when you don't 
you're actually quite miserable and you've learned this kind of the hard way with the way that people have treated you in the past. Um, so this is something that you've been forced to kind of look at in a way, um, putting yourself first, really understanding what that means. But it didn't necessarily come natural to you. And that's part of the understanding, the unlocking of this wisdom, which, of course, is why you chose this. It's brilliant because you have that macro version that, you know, looking at everything and how everything interconnects. So when it comes down to, you know, the cellular level of just you, um, it seems selfish to put yourself first. And in some ways, it seemed a little counterproductive. So, um, but this is something that you're learning. And also, again, um, with these experiences um, that you're um, interacting with and that you're absolutely integrating with and with the, the understanding of putting yourself first, it goes just, it goes beyond self-love. It's the idea of putting yourself first, the understanding of putting your energy first, and then you can help others. Those two experiences combined with the already sort of macro version of you of the heroine and the visionary, when those come together and click in, it really serves as a very firm foundation for you to move in any direction that you want to and whatever direction you move in it's going to be big there's nothing small about what you do in fact people may have said to you have you ever thought about just just doing this right now or just doing that right now and you'd be like oh what's the point everything you do is big so you know you've had to look the, the experiences pulls you down a little bit and get you in touch with the smaller essences of, again, the micro essences of how the, the world works and how you can work within that. And, and having those two uh, dichotomies fused together is how you gain your real power. So we could sort of say that you came in with the heroine and the visionary, the macro version, um, the idealistic version in some ways, the real power, the energy, the beauty, um, and being able to, to, to move within that energy. But what you're here to do in this lifetime is to make the mistakes is to uh, there's also an essence of you the loftiness of you hope you don't take offense to this but in past lives certain people would have come to work with you um, people would have sought you out you weren't integrated into the world that much before you may have found that in this lifetime you you go at least in and out of versions of the hermit for you because that's what you need in order to work with your energy that's from your past life too but you weren't as integrated into the world one way or another. So this is another way for you to be sort of integrated at a level where everybody is in and around you and you can help absolutely everybody, not just the people that came to you or came to you in the, in, in the past life and sought you out. So um, even in a past life, you may have been um, sort of a a practitioner to a king or something like that it was it's very specific people that would have seen that would have come to you and this is about sort of um you worked in a very specific realm there where you worked with certain types of people now you're here to work with absolutely everybody um, but it's not something that you may be used to so again acclimating into the sort of micro version of everything and and learning you may have realizes that all your experiences were about how um, the psychology of people, how people work. And you may have been attracted to um, people who may not be uh, that good for you or um, may have lived on the fringes of life. And there was a reason for that. You weren't really in and around that energy for some of your past lives. So this was really attractive to you to see how people click. In fact, you really want to sort of take everything apart put it all back together again in a new way. So it's not that you want to do that with people, but you're fascinated by the, these psyches and how people live and, and this, that and the other. So those experiences were really important for you to move through. So you could really um, understand how everybody lives at different stages of their lives, um, different walks of life, which is something that you, again, you may not have been as open to in past lives. So now some people may have um, treated you in a certain way and thought that maybe you were looking down on them or that you had a regal energy or who do you think you are and you you know and it's not that you came for money um, most of you wouldn't have done that in this lifetime you would have chosen something uh, a, a realistic uh, upbringing where it wasn't affluent for this reason and yet some people may have a 
I don't know how you get into this. I don't know how, you know, you land on your feet. I don't know how you do this. Um, you sort of move around as if you have a lot of money or somehow, you know, and that's the energy from the past life too. People won't be able to put their finger on it. Um, and it's not that you look down on people in any way, but again, there was that dichotomy of, of you and them. You're here to really realize that the you and them is us. And you're, you're able to do that in a really beautiful way by we're really speaking to people by really understanding people and being in and around their energy. So again, from the inside out. So let's get you a little bit more information. Once these two versions of you are fused, you are an unstoppable force. Now, for those of you who are still with us in the reading, that's pretty much where you are. Um, coming in from the fusing the macro and the micro. So this is... And also everything that you've been through with the experiences has taught you boundaries in a way um, that could have been quite painful, but they were very, very important for you because you're also an open book. And um, this is something that you needed to learn and acclimate to before you move into visions of success. Now, we, we said to you at the beginning, and we're going to remind you of this, that you, you are here to do something big. There's no two ways about it without a shadow of a doubt. And for those of you who are, um, who are with this reading and resonating with it, you already know what that is. And you've been working on it slowly and steadily in your own way and visualizing it, even if it felt like a little bit of a dream. Um, so you are here to do something big. And you are on the precipice of that. So let's see what we have here for the potion. We have judgment, absolutely, and this is reversed. Pretty much what we just said and then we have the two of cups so ultimate love comes in um, here you're here to learn how to love properly um, without boundaries and this is something that's really dear to your heart and with every experience that you've been through with every heartache that you've been through you've gotten closer to being able to do that this does actually mean in the physical level that there is somebody out there for you if you've not met them yet you will do uh, 2021 the beginning of 2022 a lot of soulmates are coming together um, if you're already with your significant other definitely meet up to the the next alignment of who you are supposed to be as a couple but this is something that you are able to um to come down and experience in this lifetime without a shadow of a doubt and again to experience people exactly as they are for who they are uh, without having any filter on them without having any judgment again really understanding the macro and the micro coming together fusing where you see the beauty in absolutely everybody now we don't mean in this hippy dippy like oh man everybody's great we mean actually like true, true, to be able to do this, this is beyond spirituality, this is beyond, um, you know, everybody's God's child, you know, this is beyond all of this, absolutely we know this, but, but living that every day, seeing that every day, and treating people um, that way every day, where they are God's child and you are not judging them, is actually very, very rare. Um, and if people acted on that, even in the spiritual community, we would be in a better place. Um, and we are in many ways, but we would, I, let's be clear, we would have been in a better place 20, 30 years ago. <laughs> We're moving to that place now. So this is not a small thing when people say, I love you no matter what. I don't see color. I don't see, this is, this is rubbish. And you've gotten to the bottom of this. You do see all of that and you inc incorporate absolutely everything into that person and actually see them, see their struggles, who they are, and you honor them in that way. This is not a small thing. And because you have the, the heroine and the visionary, you're able to do this, but only because you've allowed yourself to go through these, again, not mistakes, these experiences, they were so important for you to be able to do this. So see what else we have for you here again self-care put yourself first now self-care is going to look a little bit different to each and every one of you and that's fine and it will change and shift with time but as long as you do that and put yourself first we have pride so there's a couple of elements too that are coming in and self-discipline so there's a couple of elements that are coming into you too because of pride and self-discipline these are the two things that you had in previous lifetimes um, because of the way in which you worked you had that pride of knowledge um, and you also had that self-discipline now these are things that you've come in with with the, in this lifetime absolutely 
but they're going to work for you in different ways. Um, so in this lifetime, self-discipline is an absolute must to a certain degree, but there is a rule breaking factor um, within your psyche that where it's, it's good for you sometimes to break your own rules and go out and do things a little bit off the cuff. Um, and you do have that visionary um, understanding of that. You are capable of doing it, but sometimes you have that practical mind where it just wants to move forward and, and tick everything off the list. Um, and there's nothing intrinsically wrong with that. That worked for you in past lifetimes. In fact, um, you definitely had some kind of medical training or things like that in, in past lives where the self-discipline and the, the, the studying, that was all part of it. So you still have that in this lifetime. Self-discipline is always great. But for some of you, it's good for you to break your own rules. And again, with the judgment and the pride, you know, when some people don't see your authority and some people don't see your worth, it can be really painful and detrimental to you because you have that, that knowledge, that imprint of who you were in a past life. And it feels dangerous sometimes to be overlooked. And this is something that you bring in with the experiences too, where you can understand when when other people have been overlooked, it's very painful. So this is something that you have had to deal with in this lifetime. And the way in which you, di you, know, you uh, diffuse that completely is coming back to yourself, understanding your own beauty, understanding your own worth and putting that forward no matter what. And once that's fully integrated into your soul, you're not looking for anybody um, to acknowledge that because you already have that. So that's part of this journey and part of the experience too. So let's go ahead and finish this reading with a Star Seeds card for you. Stillness. Reflect on this moment with love, kindness, and compassion. And that's what you're here to do with the stillness too, to um, reflect within, to be in the present moment, to understand that love, kindness, and compassion in all areas can literally change the world. But you're going to do it in a very practical way, again, with the fusing with the macro and the micro, and be able to do this in a very successful way. People will come to you again in this lifetime, if they don't already, or if they do to a certain degree, but it's going to be amped up, they will start coming to you. You will be a leader in this fashion. Now, it could be through um, some kind of creative means, uh, poet, whatever it is that you do, even medical uh, medicine but it will be fused with something else. It could be uh, medicinal, it could be herbal, um, but it'll be it'll be fused with everything that we have in this lifetime available to us with the medical and this, that and the other. So it's because uh, you're all very much about not just about the old ancient ways of doing things, but fusing them very much with the, the current um, beauty and what's available to us now, fusing the both of us, uh, fusing, fusing the, the both aspects of it. And that's what's really needed in the world, because I think everybody's getting very confused about distrusting this and, 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 and relying on that and there's nothing intrinsically wrong with that but you know in this lifetime we're here to fuse absolutely everything and and be able to use it the way in which we, we we need to use it you know so not saying no to anything but also choosing what works for you so this is something that you'll be able to do melding the uh, the old and ancient with the new and upcoming and be able to really reach people in a in a wonderful way let's go ahead and abundance when your heart's intention is to serve humanity doors of abundance naturally open that without a doubt is you that's what you're here to do um, you had to learn how to put your energy first before moving into this understanding but you already know that your heart's intention is absolutely to serve humanity it will always be here to serve humanity that's why you're here in this lifetime this is not um, an easy time to be alive but everybody who was here on this earth asked to be here all the light workers um, and there is a reason for it you know what you're doing you you you've got the steadiness to you you can get quite frazzled at times but you have the sturdiness the steadiness to you that's gotten you through absolutely everything you've had a lot of ups and downs part one but you're you're plateauing at this point where you understand exactly who you are and how you can move forward and meld all these essences of yourself moving forward to gain that beautiful and uh, that gain that absolutely beautiful uh, success that you're absolutely here to do because that success will help humanity without a shadow of a doubt. So this is what we have for you. Um, we want to remind you too that uh, which goddess do you most resemble? I'm going to link that down below. This is sort of a part two, if, if you like. 
Um, so if you haven't uh, gone to that reading, you might find uh, something to, to really help you out there. So I'm going to list that down below. And also how to change your vibration, change your life. I'm going to link that one down below. I believe that's the one that I just did. If you have not checked that out, that could be wonderful for you, Pile One. Um, always go to your intuition, but it's some really, really specific ideas of how to shift your vibration up and stay there really, really in depth. Um, psychological stuff that we get into that will really, really help. So that can help you too. Those two readings will be listed down below. We are going to send you so much love and so much support for exactly where you are and who you are right now in the world. You stay safe and sane. And until we meet again, power one. Bye-bye. Okay there, pile two. If you chose the little, I was going to say puppy, <laughs> the little teddy bear icon with a little jewel there, then this is your reading. And just to remind you, we are reading your goddess essence. Which goddess archetype do you possess? So the first thing we're going to do is find out. And then we'll give you some extra information here, how they work. And then, as usual, we'll introduce some more cards and tarot. And build it all up for you. All right, so we chose two for pile one. So let's see what we have here. Got the heroine again. All right. Pile one got that. Let's see, you got the goddess. I'm going to choose one more too because the goddess is I'm feeling the need and the maiden. Okay. Wonderful. All right. So you've got a few different things going on here. The heroine, the maiden and the goddess. So let's see how these relate to you. <laughs> Bitch of fire, stand up for yourself as number one. Okay. And then master the dance. Okay. So pal two, wonderful energy here. Um, so there's a few different things that are going on for you. It's how to master the energy of um, the inner goddess of, of whom you are. And also to, to be able to, um, to redeem power from that. So let's see how, how this works. So this is very much about you standing in your own power, but it's also about you claiming it for yourself, if that makes any sense. Everybody can stand in their own power, but for you, it's about claiming the power in this lifetime. So the heroine, the maiden and the goddess, none of these are probably um, a true shock to you. It's a matter of how you move through your power and acclimate it in this lifetime. So it's, it's all about bringing everything together and not having to dumb yourself down in any way, bringing the inner divine, the goddess, the feminine energy to whoever it is, but having that taken seriously. Now for some of you, you may have found that um, with the maiden energy war, with the goddess energy, people had those, nothing wrong with the maiden energy. It's it's beautiful energy. It's um, it's sort of starting out. It's, it's all sort of spring-like, right? Um, spring moving into summer. It's sort of at the beginning um, as we move through and, and start gaining more, um, more beauty and more knowledge about ourselves. But this is about you fusing, f uh, fusing the goddess and the maiden energy together, where you have this really like um, beautiful sort of gift for an elemental kind of energy, whereby, um, you know, it's, it's sort of a play like energy, a beautiful energy, and people underestimate you. Or um, the other thing is, is that uh, people just underestimate what you've been through because in some ways you're quite shrouded and in some ways you keep, you know, you keep your cards pretty close to your chest. So this is, this is many different ways of working with this, uh, within this energy. It's how open you want to be, um, and how you fused how people have seen you versus who you really are. So it's, it's also about sort of in a way, taking off the mask, as it were, the, the, the identity, the mask of the identity, infusing all aspects of self together. And also for you, and we're just going to say this a little bit of real talk, and if it doesn't resonate with you, then it doesn't resonate. But there, for some of you, there might be 
this understanding just in how you were brought up and just how um, the energies were fixated in and around you. You had a lot of fixed energy in and around you. And for some reason, that this emotionality or um, the divine feminine aspects of emotionality or vulnerability either were not allowed or were, were not revered in a way that they should have been. So you grew up um, being emotional, being open in that way. You may have shut yourself down just a little bit. And some of that um, may have rubbed off on you in a very, very specific way. It's not that you didn't necessarily believe that emotionality and vulnerability were bunk in any way, shape or form, but you know, in order to survive wherever you were in whatever situation you were, that did need to be dumbed down for you to get through it. So even though um, you may have had this weird dichotomy where you did believe in it, but it wasn't safe to show it. So this is for you fusing all of that, um, fusing the idea of the maiden, the understanding of the maiden of, of just beginning. Now, regardless of age and regardless of what you've been through, there's an essence of you, Palatu, that's just beginning. You've had this sort of new beginning coming in and you're ready to claim it. Everything that you've been through is sort of, um, it's reached this plateau where it's been fused into the soul and you know there's something bigger coming. So it's moving into this energy of, of really encompassing the goddess and what that really means. And also taking this archetype and believing what it means for you. A lot of this lifetime for you is about figuring out things on your own terms. You're so open with your emotionality and your beauty that you often bring in so many other people's opinions, which is a wonderful trait. But you, those opinions have, have infused used a little bit too much in the past. So in the last reading, and I can't remember where I got this from, but it's certainly not my analogy. We talked about, and we're going to, I'm going to bring it up one more time for you because it's a perfect analogy for you. You have your house, um, you have everything in your house and you have your front porch. Now you can go out to the front porch and close your front door behind you and, you know, uh, um, Take counsel with anyone that you want, with everybody's point of view. And while you're on that front porch, you can be absolutely, you can take it or leave it, um, but allow everybody to their, own, their own opinions. But when you go into your house, you walk into that house and shut that door behind you with those opinions outside. So for you, it's about really understanding the core of who you are based on your own own beauty based on what you believe you are not what other people have perceived you to believe because honestly you've been quite difficult to kind of pin down you've been quite difficult to figure out um and um you've been a little bit of an enigma and in some ways that's worked for you but the enigma energy too being projected upon you sometimes caused a little bit of a pain painful understanding of a, a loss of identity now for some of you there could have been some kind of loss of identity we talked about the way in which you were brought up or certain situations that you were in you had to dumb down certain aspects of self in order to sort of make it through that was in survival mode we've been talking about that recently you're in thriving mode now so you get to pick and choose exactly who you are not based on the assumptions that people have made about you or the projection uh, the projections that people have put upon you and this is where you become your own heroine which is absolutely beautiful because in the past there may have been and it's totally understandable especially when you're younger you know when we're in these situations we say who is going to come and save us who is going to come and save me and you may have had those moments of of those dark moments of who is going to come and save me and you realize as you've grown into who you are you are here to save yourself and in doing that you can help others save themselves also so you're definitely here to stand in your own energy and really honestly show how badass the goddess energy is and how badass the um divine feminine energy is especially when it's balanced out beautifully with the divine masculine you know um so much beauty uh, so much strength and bringing that to the forefront too but also not in any way having to dumb yourself down anymore or having having to uh, carpentalize that the word that i'm looking for um 
fusing all of it together because there is a part of you with that inner child and that that newness that that beauty of this is you know this is wonderful this is magical this is brilliant um, that you've dumbed down or repressed before out of a need to survive so bringing that all in and when you brought it out again people have taken advantage of you or have wrongly suggested that you're naive or even if you are naive they've taken um they've taken the piss with that and that's really not okay but at the same time you know you're the one that's left with trying to dumb that down and um, always reacting to your environment so when that's the thing instead of reacting to your environment any anymore which is what you're not doing anymore and the thing is that reacting to your environment is is sometimes when we have a little loss of ourselves and we don't know what's going on and people are projecting upon us, of course we react to it. It's perfectly natural um, in order to do that. And in fact, most people are in a react uh, in a react mode. Um, most people are not looking within and, and doing that inner work that you're doing. So sometimes when you've reacted, um, it was because you know parts of yourself were hidden and the projection was so strong that you had to fight through it. So it was an act of survival. So, but this is completely different for you. You've gone through this, which is an incredible journey to go through. And then you're sort of reclaiming these roots on your own term, reclaiming this beautiful foundation, saying, this is who I am on my own terms. I'm not reacting to the universe. I'm not reacting to the outer sphere anymore, the external. I knew who, I know who I am. And this is really important for you to acknowledge too. If you cannot see who I am, that is your problem. It isn't mine. So before you might have seen it as your problem. Am I not being clear? Can I do this? Can I do that? You're very accommodating in some ways. And that's the, the, the beautiful maiden energy too. But now that maiden energy is fusing with the goddess energy that's saying, hell no, we're gonna, we're gonna do this. We're gonna pull this in. This is who we are. We're not gonna compromise. And of course, the non-compromising does not mean in any shape or form that you, um, you're you not flexible and you can't move in any direction. That's not it. But not compromising on who you are, which is important. And of course, it's saving the day, learning how to save the day for yourself and saving the day for others. Let's get you some more information. This is very exciting. Um, we have here with um, the Goddess Tarot too. Ooh, yeah, I'm not, not feeling that. They kind of... You know, sometimes when, obviously when cards really fling themselves at you, then I integrate them into the reading. But that did not feel like you for you. So this one's speaking. But this is about finding your own voice on many different levels and fusing those levels together to, to have this real beautiful sort of kingdom um, of, uh, of personality where you can fit into any situation that you want to, but again, on your own terms. So well, we have the balance, that's what you're learning to do, absolutely. And uh, the contemplation, well, this is, you know, this is something that we've already said. This is just literally telling us what we've already said. You've been finding that balance and working with that balance. And a lot of that balance is to do with, you know, and it sounds kind of strange, or maybe it doesn't sound really strange to you. You can let me know, but um, not taking the opinions of others at all on. Sometimes it's it's good to, to have a gauge of, of how you are in the world based on what's going on. But for you, sometimes, it's um it's good to sort of shut that out and come back to center for yourself now um the opinions that matter and the the energy that matters will keep reproducing so that you can't ignore anything um that's meant for you now let's let's move on to we don't want to focus on the past anymore i want to focus on the future because you're moving through that energy okay so absolutely all right so um so let's put these here, up here. Um, we'll keep them there, but we'll put this. So for you, it's about fusing again. It's about um, working through, a lot of you are working through, um, again, old stuff from family as we've already brought up in a, in a sort of a specific way, but finding that happiness for your else and trusting in that family unit. For some of you, there could have been some betrayal there, but at the same time, um, there's a beauty that came out of this because you know, people say blood is thicker than water, right? Um, I'm not sure where that even came from, but, and and for some, that could absolutely be true, and we're, we're certainly not taking away from that. But for you, 
it isn't. You know, um, the people that you have in and around you that you, you trust and you bring in, there's absolute family and they are as precious to you as actual family members, more so sometimes. So for you, you've been able to really redefine what family means to you and build that up in a real tangible community. And that's what you'll be doing in this lifetime. And also this, um, this balance of the divine masculine that's coming in too, that really supports the goddess and the maiden um, energy pull pulls you into the heroin energy where you're like, no, this is who I am. Fuck it. This is literally, a, excuse my French. Um, this is exactly who I am. I'm not dumbing myself down for you. And there's this, just this moment where all your guides stand up. I can even feel them now. And they're just clapping by saying, we've been waiting for you to say this your entire life. So you know, moving heaven and earth for other people and other people's opinions. This is where you get to say, this is who I am. And you get to claim every single aspect of yourself. And honestly, every single aspect of yourself, Pal 2, is absolutely brilliant. It's sort of this divergent beauty of who you are. And, you know, the, the, this holy trinity that you've got going on with the maiden, the goddess and the heroine, um, it's not even a stage of, you know, moving into one, into the other. It's the, the melding and the fusing of all um, and, and having these aspects of your personality constantly present. You're not ever moving out of one or the other. Um, and this is something that you've wanted to do before. I want to move out of this. Um, and you may have this in your life. I want to move out of this. I want to be here. I want to be there. Everybody does this perfectly human. Especially if we're looking to get out of. Sorry, we've got some birds. They're having a really large chat in the background. So um, in my backyard. So if you can hear them, that's just giving you a heads up there. Um, I feed them. I'm a bird feeder. So now they come in and, and have like a big mother's meeting in the morning. So there you go. So having that balance that you've been working towards and bringing in that beautiful divine masculine, which you use as a shield in a way, but also to, to build up and to support this divine feminine. Because for some reason, when it comes to sticking up for other people, you are fierce. You are absolutely fierce and you've got that edgy sort of, um, you know, I'm not going to take this and you will do this and you will stand up for other people. But for some reason, you've fallen short for doing it for yourself. And this is a way that you need to, this is the way that you've rectified that and you're standing up for yourself. No, it doesn't mean that you go and grab every single person that's ever done you wrong, but you can do this in your head and you can claim that power. And that's exactly where you are, which prompts this sort of new beginning happening, which is absolutely wonderful. And, you know, and other people have um, noticed this within you. Some of you may have even have had bullying or had an, an essence of bullying. And you may have thought to yourself, oh, people think I'm weak. It's not weakness that they're sensing in any way, shape or form. In fact, they sense your power and they don't like it. That's why they pick on you. But they've sensed that you're an easy target in the past because you will only stick up for other people that you've not put yourself first. And there's there's a fragment of your personality whereby it, it, it wasn't, it was fragmented to a degree that you couldn't pull it together enough to be able to stand up for yourself um, in the moment. Now, some of you who were bullied, you may have stood up for yourself and you may have ended it, but it would have been such a slog to get there. It would have been like at the end of it when it could have been done at the beginning. Um, now that's neither here nor there. It's like, you should have done this earlier. Not at all. Far from it. This was an experience for you to understand what it is like. And because of that, it's really important for you to acknowledge you have so much compassion for the underdog. You have so much compassion um, for uh, people who are not seen in this world. In this way, you have a little bit in common with Pa Wan, although very different energy. So um, this experience of actually being on the other side of that and really understanding um, why people sort of uh, project upon you. And it's been, for some of you, it's been quite devastating, but at the same time, it's it's been that nudge for you to move forward and slowly claim who you are. And the thing is, it needed to be in a divine timing aspect because who you are is very powerful. And again, this is very similar to, to Pal One in that way. Incrementally, that power had to come to you in small, small, small bursts because if it had come in right at the beginning, it might have overwhelmed you and sort of blown out your circuits. So all of this was part of the, the experience. And we want to remind you too that, you know, when we go through things, 
you know, it can be quite painful, but you know, the higher self chooses things for us to go through in order for us to, to learn and acclimate into these lessons. And once you've acclimated and they've gone in and they've really fused with who you are, you don't have to review them. And the wisdom from that gives you that absolute strength. And that's where you're at now, really knowing who you are, you know, building that really, really absolute firm foundation that cannot be messed with when somebody else comes in. The other thing that we want to say is that you can be firm in who you are. And then when somebody's energy comes in, that's really, really strong, even to the point of slightly bullying, you know, slightly pushy, that sort of thing. Um, you, your energy will automatically back down in order to allow that energy in, that other person's energy in. That's the beauty of who you are, right? There's a graciousness to you that's absolutely gorgeous. But this confuses your inner soul. So now you can stand in your power and still allow the power of the other person to come in, but also if boundaries are needed, you know, um, the sort of person like in the past, maybe if you were in a store and uh, somebody was really, really trying to sell you something, you would have left instead of saying, you know what, back off, I've got this. If I need you, I will let you know. You don't have to do it quite like that, but depending on, on what's going on, I don't know yet, give me a minute, you know. Um, and that's the idea and the understanding of, of, you know, not wanting to be rude or what that means, but also standing your ground. And again, if you're not interested in what other people are thinking of you, it doesn't matter how you come across. All you're doing ever, by the way, Paul, too, is matching the other person's energy. So if they take it as, oh, who is this person? That's the energy that they gave you in the first place. So you're just matching the energy. If if your, um, your reply to them was too much, then they need to look at their energy and say that they were too much to begin with. And this is everything that you're realizing now to move forward. So let's get you a few more cards. This is a really beautiful place for you to be in too. So the fact that these cards have come up um, that showed your past um, may be that some of you are just moving through this. Some of you are already on the other side of this and ready for your brand new beginning. And some of you are in the middle of it and feeling as though, will this ever end? Of course it will. Um, old stuff might be coming up for you. And, you know, if there are any circumstances where um, you felt like, you know, the bullying or other things that came up for you and, you know, you're, you're replaying them, replay them with the I'm done and move on out of there. You can do that 20 years later. You can you can actually change your past. We've done that in Reiki too. You can actually go in and change your past. It doesn't mean that, you know, the original essence of what happened didn't happen, but you can change your past and then you can work with um, how that fuses with your DNA, with all of your cells. You can go back and do that. So if, if all of this stuff is coming up, we urge you not to keep going over it, but to use it as an example to say, I am done. So let's see what we have here. Forgiveness, absolutely, and abundance. So we have the 88 here too, and uh, the numbers on the side, of course, when we turn the eight on the side, the sign of infinity. So if you are right now in the middle of this, forgiveness is absolutely leading on to abundance. Now, I wanna be really clear. It is absolutely not necessary, in, in my opinion, uh, as I work with my guides, at least to where you are at, you can do that. Um, whenever you want to to forgive people who have done horrible things to you or things that were not okay for you to be able to heal and move on. It's not necessary. I know that's kind of a, um, a rule one in some, some spiritual circles. Oh yeah, let's just do that. Now, if you're at that point, that's fine. All you need to do is to forgive the circumstances and you can forgive yourself um, for, you know, all sorts of things, staying too long, all of this, whatever you need to do to pull yourself out of it. That's why it would be really great for you as an exercise to go back, bring up, if you feel comfortable, some of that old things and then stand up for yourself and get out. And that way you can forgive yourself for everything and happened and that will lead to your abundance. They are directly correlated. One will lead to the other, but it's not in any way. You don't need to go back, especially if you're not ready to forgive those who just, you know, we can say that they didn't know better, but you know, sometimes that's not true. Sometimes they knew exactly what they were doing and they just didn't want to look at the responsibility of, of, of their actions, you know? Um, we see that a lot in society where people do know better and they just don't take responsibility. It just blah, 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 blah. Again, Earth is a free will zone. That's fine. The main thing is, is that you take responsibility for your own heart and your own beauty and the claiming of this Holy Trinity here as you have all of these melding in to go into your heroine 
understanding and your new beginning of your very firm foundation of knowing who you are and standing tall in that knowledge of who you are and not having that shift at all. Again, not to, just to reiterate, that's not to say that you are inflexible and you're immobile and you never want to, but that these foundations of who you are need to stay in place and you choose who that is. And that is uh, fierce, 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 fierce. And also the um, abundance is coming in too with the King of Pentacles, knowing what you want and being able to go for it and knowing that it is there for you too. So let's go ahead and get you some star seeds and the reading with some star seeds energy here for you but this is a very exciting time for you to claim your divinity on your own terms not from the world's terms but on your own terms it takes a lot of guts to do what you're doing by the way pal too very few people do it and you are a star for doing this wisdom see your adversaries as opportunities to expand your spiritual life that's exactly what we just said exactly what we just said let's pull you one more and see if we can get you something else because this you already know let's see what we have patience be patient and allow destiny to unfold um, at its own pace and that's something that you know with the impatience of moving forward um, things move uh, very quickly when you're in alignment you're in alignment when you claim all aspects of who you are this holy trinity that you have you stand firm in your foundation and you know that it is coming to you stand firm in your own um, forgiveness um, and take responsibility for that and again if you don't want to um, forgive the other person or people that were um, involved in any of this it really does not matter it's more important it's only important for you to put your energy first and to do right by you the rest will fall into place so we hope this resonated for you pal too I want to remind you that this is kind of a part two-ish um, and we do have another reading which goddess do you most resemble um, and that I'm going to link down below if you have not checked it out it could be really interesting to get a little extra information and also how to change your vibration change your life that's the reading that I did just before this one if you have not checked it out I highly suggest that you do always listen to your intuition see if you're guided in that direction pal too but it could be really wonderful for you to pick up um, a little extra um, information there and that is a really deep reading that's not just you know go plant-based and put your feet in the water although all of those things are wonderful if they speak to your soul but this is real real information that can get you some um some inner knowledge and some wisdom so i'm gonna link those down below for you um, for extra support if you feel as though you need it we are sending you so much support for exactly where you are and who you are in the world so much love to you stay safe and sane until we meet again pal two bye bye okay pal three this is your reading if you chose the gold band then as a reminder, we are doing, we are reading your goddess essence and what goddess archetype do you possess? So the first thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to let you know uh, what goddess archetype you possess and then we will move into more of a detail on how that works for you. And of course, we'll be bringing in some more information with tarot and other cards as we move forward. But let's concentrate on your archetype. So this one is the heroine. That does come up every single time. <laughs> I guess I'm not surprised, but out of 13, let's see what else we have. Mother, okay. I'm gonna choose another one for you. Okay, and you have crone, wonderful. All right, different aspects of self here. Mother, crone, heroine, love this. Lavender, surround yourself with love and be fluid, okay. Surround yourself with love. Sorry, I had a spider crawling up my leg. Spider energy. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> for you, this is a lifetime for you to, um, to uh, for nurturing and really understanding your own wisdom and how it lies and integrates into the world on your own terms so this is um this is kind of an interesting life for you insofar as a lot of what you have done or a lot of your success 
in many ways can initially come from um, observing. You are the natural observer. And all of this is absolutely wonderful. Sometimes it gets in your way um, because you miss out on some of the actions sometimes. But we want to remind you there's a divine timing element to who you are in this lifetime and how that develops. So for some of you who are like, I've missed out on this or what happens if I did this? And, you know, first of all, that's a very human thing. Um, we all we all do that. But for you, you have a very um, specific path in this lifetime. And for some of you who don't feel as though if you felt a little bit lost on that path, it's because you have the observer mode going on. And in fact, you do a lot more with the observer mode. Now, a lot of you could be artists because whatever you observe and all the information that you take in, you actually put down on paper or on canvas or out in the world in your own way. Um, you have a creative aspect to who you are and you wouldn't be able to translate any of that if you weren't such good observers. But un uh, unfortunately, occasionally it does feel as though, you know, you're almost too fluid that um, you're not in your own body and you feel as though you're a little bit lost. You're never lost. It's just the way in which you navigate is slightly different to everybody else. But that makes your original, unique uh, trailblazer uh, thinking outside of the box. You don't do things the way that other people do. Sometimes you crave um, or there's been instances in your life where you have craved um, wanting to sort of be for clarity sake normal you know um 2.2 2 kids white picket fence this that and the other and if you have that that's wonderful too um but doing things in a certain order is something that even if you do have the kids in the, the white picket fence which sounds great but it's um, a matter of how you've done things you've done things out of order um some of you have gone back to learn certain things you know at a later age uh, you never stop doing that. It's all about the wisdom for you. It's all about the research. And in some ways, too, um, you see the world as something to be researched. So sometimes you're slow to take action. But when you realize it's time to move, everything sets aside. The path sort of uh, makes its way very much available to you and you move forward. So um, your main message here is that you can bring whatever you want to wherever you are. So sometimes it's the way in which you see things, you know, um, I haven't achieved this or I want this and I want that. But for you, um, everything that you achieve will be a mindset. And that's now this will be reflected in a very visceral way in in the world. We're not saying that you shouldn't expect um, any beautiful, uh, you know, um, uh, proof of this uh, essence or um, external validation or any kind of success. That's not what we're saying. And you will get that. Um, and you, you will move into that without a shadow of a doubt. But what you're here to do is very much in the mindset and that mindset will be taken everywhere you go. And that's what you're really working on. So it's not really desperately important for you at this point no matter where you are, to be in a specific place for that mindset to manifest wherever you are is where you can do this. And then sometimes it's about manifesting that mindset to be able to move forward. Um, so sometimes when you're desperate to move out of something and, you know, and you think the mindset will change after you move out of it, it's actually the other way around. But this is something that you have learned too something that you've learned about yourself and bringing in the mother and the crone energy with the, the heroine energy too. Um, bringing it in, being the hero of your own story and knowing that you can not control in the way we're just using that word for clarity's sake, but that you control your own destiny. But at the same time, there's a fluidness to it. So um, you can move in any direction and still achieve what it is that you want because that mindset has been absolutely set up for you. So let's go ahead and... Ooh, as we all over the place. So let's get you some tarot here. So surrounding yourself with love. Now this is an interesting um, part of the reading that I'm getting that may not resonate with everybody. So bear with me. But um, for some of you, it feels as though, now this one is speaking to me too, and I'm going to go on the bottom of this fortune at the bottom. Absolutely. So for some of you, it feels as though um, surround yourself with love. That sounds really, you know, obvious, right? But for you, it may not have been because 
um, the way in which you had energy around you growing up or in and around you, um, you were fascinated by sort of darkness. You were also fascinated by all different types of people and not all of them were great for you. Um, but there was this understanding of not having those boundaries up at the beginning. So the, you know, there were people in and around you and you were in it for the experience. And there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, it's, it's a wonderful way to live. But it also, as you moved out of that understanding and as you sort of grew out of that understanding, and then you became a little bit more fussy, which is always a good thing to do, but became a little bit more fussy about the energy that was in and around you. Um, it's It didn't occur to you that all energy around you needed to be in love, maybe um, needed to be love filled in and around you. You may have been in certain situations growing up or in certain situations that you were put into. Maybe for some of you, it would have been a church type situation if you had a good family, um, but that you went to church and you, there was there was something that you didn't wherever. This is just an example where you didn't feel the love and maybe the you know your family members didn't know that. And and but there was there was some kind of energy growing up where there wasn't always love in and around you um, and it, you know, varying different degrees. For some of you, it may have felt a little unsafe. So as you were growing up, you took it upon yourself to believe that, you know, energies around you are just going to be displaced. There's just going to be all sorts of different energies and you don't necessarily have the right to choose. <coughs> oh, excuse me. You don't really have the right to choose just good energies in and around you, or it didn't. You didn't think that that's the way uh, things worked. You know, you you figured out that, or you thought the norm was to have so many different types of um, energies around you, and not or some of them were duplicitous. You know, so this was really exciting for you when you realized that. You know, you had a say, absolutely a say over your environment, and again, this is about mindset. This is about mindset and you can claim it with your mind um, to start off with. And once that mindset is very clear about the abundance and the beauty and the love, then that brings in more of it. Again, mindset, mindset, mindset. Whereas before, it's not that you didn't have a strong mind. You have a very, very, very powerful mind, but it may have focused on too many different things, which means that, you know, you're not moving forward as quickly as you want, or you're, you're getting various different results with different energies coming in. So let's get you some more information. Yes, two of pentacles, absolutely the balance of that. Uh, the king of swords reversed, and then we have the four of pentacles reversed. So... So what we have here is, um, in essence, a little bit of energy um, with pile two. It's all about coming into knowing who you are, using your sword of truth and saying, this is who I am. And for some of you, I keep seeing you sort of knocking on the door and trying to speak, but your words aren't coming out. So um, some of you may have... Um, stifled your voice a little bit in the past because you didn't necessarily believe that people would listen to it or maybe you were mocked for it or for any various different reasons these are general readings that there is a little bit that will you know resonate with each and every one of you in different ways but for you it's about reclaiming um, the different levels of wisdom that you have from the mother to the crone a lot of wisdom that you always had and it's really funny to think that some of the people that didn't that sort of disregarded you before or um, put in a situation where they they didn't take you too seriously you know as you've grown into this energy and as that mindset has become very very clear for you where you understand that the power has always been with yourself um, a lot of people don't get this and so far as people are always saying it starts with yourself go within know thyself and yet they're spending so much time projecting on the external fighting this doing that doing that without realizing that they they've created the outer side of that and all they have to do is come back in and and work with within so whatever's within is is on the outside too so this is something that you have realized intrinsically that the real power is pulling back your energy and getting that energy is very much in line with who you are and then the reflection of the outer is absolutely showing you um, where you are in the inner. And even though this is pretty much a staple in, in, um, 
in spirituality, we still see people who are awakened and going off and do all sorts of different things and it just, you know, and not, and not taking it in, not taking it in. So this is your real power. This is where you can stand tall and this gives you what you need to move forward. Now you've always known this intrinsically on a level. We always do because it's, it's one of the tenets of, of spirituality, but actually really knowing it, actually putting it into action and actually seeing how, how many times can I say actually, and actually seeing how that manifests in your life with true alignment, with true beauty and watching your life transform. That's where the money is, you know, that's where the fire is and that's where you are at with this balance, being very careful. Now it's very important for you, it's very important for everybody really, but particularly for you to be careful about the energy that you have in and around you. Now, some of that you can't control. We totally understand that. And we don't want to, um, you know, make you wary or suggest that you're this precious princess that, you know, and that's, that's what happens with um, very highly sensitive people and empaths too, just like you, you know, um, you know, we, we tend to see ourselves as broken or weak in some ways. And then we, you know, sometimes we, we take ourselves out of those situations because we don't want to deal with them, but actually it really is a superpower. And once you bring that energy in and secure it, you can go into any situation that you want to and, you know, supply that beautiful radiance, put it on at any notice and be who you are and not have to um, shift any of that power divergence, which you've done before. If somebody else comes in, um, you know, you've, you've allowed them to have that power and you've, you've dumbed yourself down. It's almost like you've taken yourself off the pedestal. We want you on that pedestal at all times. However, when you are in situations um, where you can control, like where you work, for instance, you can choose somewhere else um, and all sorts of different places. Um, we do want you to be really, really cognizant of that because it does affect you. And it's not that you can't keep your power in and around them. You can, but it's also this, this deep sort of need for everybody to be okay. And that's that mother energy. In a way for you, it could have gone against you a little bit in the past. You've been a little bit more of a martyr. You've taken on that energy for other people. And we have to remind you that everybody has their own path for healing and nobody else can do the work for them. So that's why it's really important when somebody's going down the path and they're, you know, they're really like um, pushing the external, everything's wrong, da, 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 da. You know, you can just stand tall for them and, and give them the space that they need, but they themselves have to click in that they're the ones that need to pull in their energy and work from within. It's up to them to do that. So you've moved out of that martyr needing to do that and take on that energy for healing because that healing is absolutely needed. They need to do that themselves. And you've just got the, the mother energy, but there's always that mother energy of you, which wants everybody to be okay and, 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 and wants everything to be fine. And when people are deliberately, um, you know, falling short of that, it really actually hurts you in a physical form. It really actually hurts you. In the past, you may have gotten like stomach aches or all sorts of different things, um, different things that are going on. It's always good for you to um, reclaim your energy at the end of the day. Um, make sure you, you know, earthing, put your feet in the earth, ground it into the energy and make sure that you work with your guys to take out any energy that isn't yours. Um, You'll always have that energy in and around you, always have that mother energy and people love that nurturing part of you too. Um, sometimes it wasn't always safe to have that nurturing energy because so many people took advantage. So you've done that down in certain parts of your life, but it never went away. Um, you always have that, but that wisdom melding in with the, the, the hero coming in for you to, to absolutely be out there and to shine your truth and to, to speak your truth in your own power and to really claim the life that you want. This really in essence, pile three, is um, coming in and around you to claim the life that you want. And it's absolutely there for you because as we said before, it may have felt as though, you know, things weren't moving quickly enough or you're going in this direction, that direction, because sometimes the universe wanted to stay, wanted you to stay in a stationary position for you to work with your mind and then move out of it. It's almost like you achieve it in your mind first and then it's given to you. Um, and it doesn't always seem like it works that way for other people on the external, but it works for you that way. And when you do receive it, it's almost like, um, oh, that's great, but I didn't really need it. But that's the way that you are gonna work in this lifetime, but it's all there for you now. Let's get you a few 
few extra. Okay, let's see what we have here. Number one and number two. And I'm being called to have a look at the bottom. Forgiveness, that came up in pile two. Also, if you feel called to always listen to your intuition, this is very similar energy in some ways to Pal 2. You might want to check it out. But again, listen to yourself. They got abundance and forgiveness. That's so funny. Abundance and then pride. Now, pride came up, I think, in the first one. So, you know, sometimes you've wanted to, you've secured yourself. You want to do things your own way and you can be a little bit stubborn. Now, this was really important for you to be stubborn before because the stubbornness actually created this foundation of strength for you. So it was really important for you to claim that stubbornness. You're always going to be a little bit stubborn. Um, you might even have that Taurus energy. <laughs> if not, it, that's all reasonably good. The good thing about being stubborn is that when somebody steps up and, and, and gives you uh, new information, you you are ready to be more fluid because you're all about the next thing. You're all about the next idea and you're all about doing things efficiently. So if somebody comes up and says, actually, this would work better, you would change it. But in the past, um, pride has come in and the stubbornness has come in, but it was part of the, the mentality that you had for surviving. So this is melding away now. And as it as it melds and it, as it dissipates, you will come into this abundance factor. So the reason why this is coming up and we just want you to be aware of it is that, you know, it's perfectly reasonable and we all do this. We all do this. And, and it's great to dream. It's really important to dream. Because sometimes in the dreaming, we figure out what it is that we truly want. Because sometimes what we ask the universe, especially for you, um, the reason why you've fallen short, <coughs> excuse me, in the past, is because you've, you've actually asked for what you think you can get or what you think the natural step is for you. Okay. And now there's neither a right or a wrong with this, but there might've been a better way to do things insofar as, you know, you asking um, the universe, all right, what's my higher self? What's the best thing for my higher self now, right now? And also you play the long game too, right? You played the long game your entire life. You've, you've known that you've had to work at things and this, that, and the other. Now things come easily for you, but we want to shift that now because things can be a lot easier for you and you can propel yourself once you're aligned really quickly. You don't have to keep living in this way. And you can say to the universe, what is the quickest way for me to get to my destination? You know, because all of these experiences you've been through, you don't need to go through them again, right? Sometimes we, we get a few different ones and it's like, yeah, we get it, universe. Oh my God, we get it, we get it, we get it. And it's a nuanced version of what we've already been through, right? And they're, they're going to keep sending those. They're going to keep sending them until you get it. You've done that, right? So you can say to the universe, you know, this is what, you know, I think I have an idea. I always start off with, I think I have an idea of what I want, right? Because I like to start with a base. I'm very visual. I like to start with a base. But you know what, universe, you have infinite sight. If you can, if you think something's better for me, I'm going to go with that. But this is my baseline. Negotiate. Learn to negotiate. You know, you're at the point where it's good for you to negotiate and not settle. Whereas before, so this, you know, the, the, um, the stubbornness moved into a little bit of pride, um, and now, but that's dissipating and moving into abundance. So you're right here now, you're ready to claim sort of everything and move forward in alignments really, really quickly. So, um, you played the long game. Now it's time to play the short game, but again, it's all in the mind. It's all in the heart. It's all in within your reach, within that power and everything else is there. So as an exercise, you can see that everything that you want or that you're moving towards, you actually already have. So, um, I mean, they say that in, um, law of attraction, but you actually already have it. So with the meditation, imagine, know what it's like to feel like actually having all of that. It's right there. There is another version of you right now that's living out that dream. All you have to do is align with that version and move right into it. And there's not like three, four years. There's not a, a million different ways to get, there's a million different ways to get there, but the most direct route is what you want. And that is in your heart center. That is in your mind. And when we say your mind, we don't mean the ego or the practical mind, obviously. It's that direct mind um, center working with your heart center, your intuition, your beauty moving you forward. So let's finish here with some star seeds, but you are ready to play that short game. You've put in that work. 
And that this claiming these archetypes are just moving you forward in a beautiful way. Advancement, look at that. A strong energy is propelling you forward. Follow the stirrings of your heart. What do we just say? You've done all of that work. These melding of these this beautiful Holy Trinity here is moving you forward. In fact, a lot of you are going to be seeing a lot of different circumstances coming up for you pretty quickly. Um, always listen to your intuition as to which way to go. Choice. By staying conscious in your thoughts, you guide your journey in the direction of choice. That's what we say. Staying conscious in your own thoughts, taking profound responsibility for them, but at the same time, knowing that everything that you want is already, you've already gained it, you already have it. So I'm um, guiding the journey again, your journey. What is the quickest way for me to get there? What does my higher self, um, uh, what direction does my higher self want to move toward? It's okay to have a, a version of what you think that is, but be ready to negotiate with the universe. I know I can do a little bit better. Show me what it is. I know I'm brilliant. Show me what I can do. So this is what we have for you. Beautiful pile three. We want to remind you, I'm going to link them down below. This is kind of a part two. So which goddess do you most resemble was the first one. Wow, can't speak. <laughs> first one that we did. So if you haven't um, gone in and listened to that reading, I'm going to list it down below. Always listen to your intuition. That could be something um, that could give you a little more information. And the beautiful reading that I want, uh, that I did just before this one, how to change your vibration, change your life would be wonderful, particularly for pile two and pile three. Again, if you want to check out pile two, feel free. Um, but this is really, really in-depth information about working with your vibrations. So if you've not checked that out, I'm also going to put that down below. Please do. I think you can find some more support and beautiful action in those words, in those readings. So we are sending you a love and support for exactly where you are and who you are in the world right now. Please stay safe and sane. Until we meet again, take care, Pal 3. Bye-bye.